it's not so easy to talk about gender gap in science. We could start with a funny question like uh, who do you think about if I ask you to name a statistician? Maybe your answer will be Sir Ronald Fisher or Frederick Gauss, but I think that few of you or even nobody will say Florence Nightingale, for example. Try to ask yourself how many times in my life have I associated the words scientist, businessman, politician to a man? And also ask yourself how many times have I used the pronoun he to refer to an unknown individual? Discrimination is not necessarily a bad thing in statistics. We, as statisticians, actually look for discriminant factors that will highlight group differences. Let's imagine a meeting room full of people working in the same research group and discussing a project. And you, a young woman, express your opinion about the statistical method, which is your area of expertise, and feel like nobody listened to you. Then, a few moments later, your male colleague repeats exactly what you said, and suddenly everybody listened to him. I'm sure many women recognize themselves in this kind of situation. However, the problem occurs when sex and gender, instead of discriminant factors, become discriminating factors. Career progression in academia depends largely on how much you get published in peer-reviewed journals. But getting published is not the same fit for men as it is for women. A number of studies have found that female authored papers are accepted more often or rather higher under double-blind review. Nevertheless, most journals and conferences carry on without adopting this practice. Suppose the results of a clinical trial says that the effect of a specific drug is different in men and in women. In this case, sex is a discriminant factor. But if women are not included in the trial, then gender is a discriminating factor. In 2021, still most of the studies do not consider sex in disaggregated data. The average proportion of women participating in clinical trials don't overcome 30%. Today, I'd like to share what is my experience as a woman and statistician in banking. Well, I've always felt to be part of a team where all voices are heard, where people share their uniqueness as added value for the company over time. How often is woman associated with children, family, whereas man is associated with business and career? So the issue is, why do we think about men when we refer to famous scientists? Maybe the answer comes from one of the oldest claims that women have a smaller brain than men, which was considered evidence for intellectual inferiority. While it's true that, on average, women's brains are smaller by about 10%, there are several problems with this assumption. First of all, from a statistical point of view, we can say that, despite the average difference in size, the overall overlap in the distribution of men and women's brain is huge, so that you can observe women with big brains and men with smaller brains. Secondly, if we agree with the claim that size matters, we can observe in nature lots of examples of animals having bigger brains than men, and they are not renowned for being much brighter. Women and men are different. They are biologically different, and sex is a discriminant factor. Women and men have also different behaviors, tastes, and different ways of thinking. So, also gender can be a discriminant factor. If uh, we were to identify men and women with a statistical methodology, well, I would say that uh, women could be identified with the structural equation models because they simultaneously try to estimate casual relationships and also to assess unobservable latent constructs. Maybe men are more similar to sequential estimation methods because they sequentially move in the procedure until the desired degree of precision is achieved. If you speak a language that is gender biased, then you're more likely to have a gender stereotype. Just consider that several types of careers in the English language belong to men, such as businessmen, postmen or firemen. Although in Great Britain the monarch is a woman, when we refer to her institution, 
we refer to a kingdom. The word kingdom doesn't even exist. Another widespread stereotype is that women are inherently irrational since their feelings from the emotional right hemisphere interfere with the processing in the cooler rational left hemisphere. But I think that in this irrationality there is the woman's power. In the Italian language, which distinguishes grammatically the female gender from the masculine one, the use of the masculine form for professional titles is widespread. Just imagine that words such as sergeant and engineer or mayor don't even exist in the feminine form. And if two things are different, doesn't mean that one is better than the other. We hear every day, everybody, especially men, saying that women are different. Then why does the average gender become men? I have frequently asked, especially by women, how I could reconcile family life with a scientific career. Well, it does not be so easy. In my company, the female leadership is really valued and enhanced at all organizational levels of the group. Now the question is, how was this possible? Well, I'm really proud of Unicredit Decathlon commitment to empower its highly diverse staff by creating an equal opportunities workplace where people of all genders and also ages and cultural backgrounds can contribute to decision making. But on the top of it, before talking about stat women's secrets of success, we also should redefine the concept itself of success through a more engendered perspective. For me, for example, as a stat woman with two children, it has been a great achievement to share both successes and failures of my professional life with my children. They are my first supporters. They have always joined with me about my successes, but my failures have also been a great life lesson for them. And the lesson is, if you aim to something, you must never give up. You must try, fail and try again. Failure is an important part of every successful career. Success requires passion, effort and expertise, of course, to include in the model, not in an additive way, but with interaction terms. To the more experienced researchers, especially the women, I would like to say that we, women in science, look up to you. You are our role models and you inspire us with your example. I would like to be listened to like men are listened to, and I want my expertise to be recognized and valued as those of men, because my gender has nothing to do with them. Promoting gender equality and inclusion is a way to improve the well-being of individuals and make our business strategies more sustainable in the long term. I would then like to say to all women in science that you are worth of your position. You deserve it and probably you deserve even more. So apply for that job or that research grant that you do not feel good enough to apply to. We as women need to start believing more in ourselves and our possibilities. Some concrete actions toward gender equality Unicredit signed the Her Majesty Treasury's Women in Finance Charter, committing to double its level of women in senior management roles at group level to 20% by 2022, for one thing. Which is the contribution that we can give as a young generation of scientists to shatter the gender gap? I truly believe that we can start by changing the way we write and speak publicly, and to be more aware about the way we think. I think that to shatter the gender gap, we need to work together as a community. The younger and the more experienced the researchers, men and women. And we can start by appreciating the unique perspective that women bring to the workplace. To shatter the gender gap, we don't need to eliminate the difference. Actually, we have to make sure that the differences among groups are maintained, valued and respected, but that equal treatment and attention will be given to everybody. We have to break down the stereotype that women need to be Wonder Women to reach success. 
they must not hide themselves behind a fake equality because actually men and women reach the goals approaching work differently.